I started this week walking to Albuquerque from Laguna and uh, stayed with a couple people in Albuquerque. Albuquerque ended up being um, a longer stay than I anticipated because there was a giant cloud of smoke. Of the two things I expected to encounter as far as weather goes, I thought a lot about Kansas and tornadoes and Missouri and Iowa and floods. And I hadn't given any thought to giant clouds of smoke. So it did slow me down a little bit. Um, I, uh, I started the week walking toward Albuquerque. My friend Chris picked me up. I took a day off to buy a pair of shoes, didn't find anything I liked. For most of New Mexico, I've walked along the highway, uh, I-40 and I-25. New Mexico is interesting because there are not a lot of towns and cities. There, there are some small towns on side roads, but the roads go like this off from the highway. So basically, at a certain point, I'm like, I guess I just have to walk along the highway. It's not fun to walk along the highway. It's brambles and high grass and everything in New Mexico and Arizona are out to get you, including the plants and definitely the animals. I have only run across one snake and I think it's a fairly harmless snake. It was actually quite afraid of me and ran away, probably a bull snake. Um, but, you know, as I'm walking along the side of the highway with the high-speed traffic and in down in the crickers uh, looking for snakes, I can't say it was the most enjoyable walking. However, it was beautiful. So at least there is beauty along the side of the highway. And it's actually, in some ways, a little easier to walk along the highway sometimes because when you're on a, like, a frontage road, basically I've walked along Route 66 a lot too, you have two lanes of traffic and a shoulder that's about this wide and a ditch. So that's not always the easiest thing either. So one of the cool things was walking along Route 66. I've walked quite a bit of it. I'm even, even up here I'm on Route 66. And there's a lot of abandoned buildings and burnout looking places and hotels that are no longer in business. And it's interesting actually, I kind of like it. And so when I'm on the side road, it, it, there's not as much traffic, but if, when there is traffic, I have to jump down in the ditch. And on the major highway, I am in off to the side 100 feet, so it's not too bad, but definitely I end up with a lot of dust in the bottom of my shoes every day and prickers in my socks, and it wasn't very comfortable. So I have bought a pair of boots, and fabulous. Uh, I'm still breaking them in a little bit, but really they're very much more comfortable and I don't have so many prickers in my socks by the end of the day and I don't have to worry quite as much about snakes. So I stayed with Dan Buckley's brother and I stayed with Chris, my friend Chris in Albuquerque for a couple of days and then your brother for a couple of days and that was really fun actually and they were very nice and let me stay a couple extra days because there was a giant cloud of smoke over all of Albuquerque. Of all the ways to see the bluest skies in the world, it was pea soup. It was actually a little scary when I was walking from Laguna. I got, this was I think before I reached Laguna, but I was, I haven't been afraid very many times, you know, on um, country roads. People always worry about, I don't know, sociopaths and stray dogs, but I haven't worried very much. But I was walking along and suddenly I walked more and more into this cloud of smoke. And I knew it was smoke, but it looked like tornado weather. The sky was a weird color. The cows looked a little distressed. It looked frankly creepy, really creepy. And the day I walked through Albuquerque, I got a late start. So I was hanging out and talking to your brother and sister-in-law and having fun. But I got kind of a late start and I ended up walking in the afternoon, which is when the smoke was worse. And I ended up taking a two hour nap that day and sleeping for about nine hours. That's sort of unusual for me. So I feel like maybe I had a little smoke inhalation. And anyway, that, that, it was just interesting and interestingly seeing this part of the world. And it makes me sad because it's an area, it's not exactly where I went through in Arizona, but it's south of there. And that area is so gorgeous. 
Those trees are so beautiful and they're gone. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and just gone. Yeah. So um, then I got to Santa Fe and my way to Santa Fe, I had planned to try to stay in one of the pueblos. And I contacted the tribal council and I contacted them again the next day and they said, I'm sorry, we're having religious ceremonies and we can't accommodate you. Which, you know, is like a little bit disappointing, but, you know, they block off the streets and everything. Like, you're just not allowed in there. And that I completely respect. You know, that makes sense to me. But, um, so I, instead I walked to the casino. I didn't even go in. I, I, I have this realization that waitresses are the nicest people. Because I walked to this um, kind of truck stop diner that was by the, uh, the casino. And I had a ride arranged. I stopped in at the visitor center just because I was going through Bernanillo. And I, it's this old cute town. And I just stopped in and chatted with them. And they're like, wow, that's amazing. And one of the women said, you know, I'm going up towards Santo Domingo. On the way back, I'll just check and make sure you're okay. And it was a good thing because as it turns out, I couldn't go that day to that area. And I ended up back out on the highway because I wasn't even allowed to walk through there. And I walked to the casino, stopped there, called her, and she came and got me at the casino, but um, at the restaurant there. But while I was waiting, I wasn't sure about that she was really going to give me a ride. I hadn't gotten a hold of her. And when I've walked miles and miles and things are uncertain, I always feel a little weepy. <laughs> like maybe I'm a failure of some sort. <laughs> I can't make anything work. I even had a hotel set up that night, everything. And I had a plan for the next morning, but there was some part of me that, you know, just feels kind of like, eh. I probably just because I'm exhausted and hungry. Well, the waitress was very sweet with me, and she said, oh, yeah, and some of the mingle, they're quite strict. And uh, I think she was maybe Pueblo as well, or maybe Hispanic, but um, she, she knew about them there and said, I'm not surprised. And we just chatted, and she said, well, will you come back down? Are you walking? And I said, no, I'll probably drive down with my mom. And she said, well, make sure to stop by here with your mom. I said, all right. She said, I really like what you're doing. And um, so when I went to pay, when my friend showed up, she said, no, it's on me. Just make sure to come by with your mom on your way back. And the next morning, I went to the bus station to catch my bus to the train to take the train back to the casino area so that I could walk again the next day because I'd stay. I ended up getting a ride all the way back to basically Albuquerque was where they put me up. The, the Chamber of Commerce helped me find a discounted place to stay at. So I went all the way back to Albuquerque again that night by happenstance, almost the northern part, and then took the train, which was neat. It's the Rail Runner. And it's only four dollars. It takes you all the way to, you know, where I, where I was going, Santo Domingo, or, or could have taken me all the way up to Santa Fe, and talked to some people on the train. And um, when uh, when I went to the bus station that morning, turns out the bus that takes you to the train that leaves at 7:30 leaves at 7:01, and I had missed it. So, and I got up at 5.30 that morning to make sure I would make all my connections because I figured it'd take a while to get there, it, but I didn't realize how far the bus station was from the hotel, but I'd walked past an IHOP on my way there. So I went to the IHOP and I had a very delicious breakfast and I, when I came in, she gave me kind of a funny look and I said, what am I doing, right? She said, yeah, what are you doing? And I told her I'm walking home and I told her about the project. Well, she loved it. I have found over and over again waitresses to be kind and generous and helpful. And it's not always a glamorous job and people, I think people aren't always as nice to waitresses as they should be, you know? It was just very sweet, just like, just having that, that, that day where I felt like two, two times nothing worked out and I didn't even tell them that, I just said, they just bought me breakfast. And then I got to Santa Fe and I had a friend of two different friends, of Tom and of Carl's here, Ron Spencer, I don't know if you know him, but anyway, he's a photographer, and uh, he and Blake helped put me up in their friend's house one night, and then they put me up another night, and then today I was going to try to walk 20 miles to Glorietta, and they, they said, you know, you still have a bed here if you want to stay another night, 
and we'd more than gladly get you. And they said, actually, our house is only is nine miles from where your starting point is. So if you get there and you're tired, you know, so I ended up walking 15 miles today and they came and got me. You know, five miles is nothing in a car and it's an awful lot on foot. <laughs> Idyllically beautiful. It's warm during the day and cool at night and, you know, all the wonderful altitude weather and it's it's gorgeous here, of course. I'd never been to Santa Fe before. They've really given me a tour of the town. And last night we went out to see this uh, incredible, you would love it, incredible installation. They built a boat, and it's a fantastical boat with weird engines and computers and screens and installations and doohickeys and a whole storyline and sea, sea anemone looking things outside and it's lit up and it, it feels like a giant magical fort. If I'd been able to make a fort like that at age seven, you could have killed me and I would have died half a week. <laughs> and they said that, it, that they've gotten groups through there from everything from like little kids to grandpa and everybody loves it. And they had 150 people collaborated on it, which I, having worked with artists over the years and done collaborations, am impressed by. They said everybody just loved it and joined in. So it was really, really, really special and neat. And it was nice to see it, especially with Ron and his friend Steph and Blake, because Steph brought his video camera and Ron had his camera. And of course, I had my headset on, <laughs> had, you know, I had cam on. And at some point, I'm looking at Steph, and Steph is videotaping Ron, and Ron is taking a picture of me. <laughs> yeah, there are all these multiple layers of reality in my life. <laughs> so that's my week. 